Puga has quite recently made some major points in the cooling market with their Forza 135. It was quite the cooler and, and almost beating an NHG 15, but what about water? This is the Kuga Poseidon GT in 360mm and there's actually something very special about it. Not only is the radiator quite dense at 22 fpi, but instead of having these V-shaped fins, Kuga tried out something new that they just called Utter Right. And I really love that name. They are utterly right here. Instead of having a short contact area for each fin, Kuga straightened up their fins so that they make complete contact with the water channels up until the very moment that they are traveling back to the water channel on the other side. They are claiming an increased efficiency in transferring the heat from the channel to the fins, which does make total sense on paper, but we will see about that. Before that, let's take a closer look at the AIO itself. Kuga's newest and best 360mm AIO comes inside the usual packaging. Inside we'll find the radiator pump combo, three of Kuga's MHP120mm fans, the usual installation material for all nowadays relevant sockets, some thermal paste, a 3 to one PVM splitter, and an ARGB controller in case that your motherboard doesn't have any 3-pin ARGB headers on its own. To install the AIO on Intel, we need to take the provided Intel backplate and adapt the ends to fit the socket. After putting it behind the motherboard, we need to position the silicone pads on the outsticking thread and screw everything down using the double-sided Intel screws. Over on AMD, we need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets and replace them with the double-sided AMD screws. Before we continue, I am not a fan on how Kuga did the mounting part. According to the manual, you are supposed to first screw in the pump bracket on both AMD and Intel, but not all the way in, and without any cooler. From there, how they want you to do it is apply the thermal paste, position the pump combo on top of everything and rotate it until the hooks are in place and then tighten the screws. I do not like that. That feels wrong. I am not saying it doesn't work. It works just fine, but the, the process feels incredibly wobbly. Additionally, because the pump bracket is in no way attached to the pump, I don't like that. I don't like having the possibility to just... As long as there is no idiot playing around with the cooler, it's going to be fine. It will not, you know, fall out. But but still, I don't know, I, I, I just prefer the usual way. But let's get to the fans. The ones included with the Poseidon are Kuga's in-house made MHP120. And these are freaking monsters. They and their zero bent nine wings design are spinning at up to 2000 RPM and pushing up to 82.48 CFM at 4 0.24 mm of H2O. That's a lot for just 2000 RPM. They can be controlled over a regular PVM and by using the included PVM splitter, all of them can also be combined into a single header. The pump design above the copper base of the Poseidon looks surprisingly good for my taste. Usually I am not the biggest fan of on, on, on all of that RG poop and especially the usage of any type of RGB infinity mirror. But here I have to say that did it quite well. It's not overwhelming, there is a nice looking colored Kuga logo in the center. For my usual non-excitement about RGB, this does look kinda nice. But overall, I'm a big fan of the look and feel of the Poseidon series. Ignoring that utter right fin design, the radiator looks like a boss, it is also mattish black at the endpoints, and in between we got that matte grey fan shroud, including a little Kuga logo. I, I really like what they did here. Of course, this is design, and design will be up to you to decide, but for my taste, this is nice. Especially combined with the fans, it's, it's quite the industrial look. The tubes are fine too, 400mm long, nicely braided and adjustable at the water block. Nothing, nothing wrong so far on neither design nor quality. Just one thing, the cap of the water block also has a thin RGB line going all around it, which is perfectly fine. But in case that you got your Kuga logo misaligned or if you want to install the tubes on the other side, you can rotate the top cap in 360, which in theory sounds like an amazing feature. But keep in mind that you can rotate the water block out of the socket, which 
As long as you grab just the cap, won't happen, but if you grab slightly below, that feature takes my anxiety to a whole other level. But enough talk about the look and feel, let's take a look at the performance. Letting the Poseidon 360 cool down 120 watts allowed it to cool down the CPU to 30.7 degrees C above ambient. This positions it at the top of the benchmark chart, outperforming some other important 360 coolers like the Geometric Future Neon or AquaFusion ADV360. On the flip side, there are also quite some models above it, like Be Quiet's lineup or anything from Li and Li. So overall, it's a solid middle ground. On the noise to performance front for 120 watts, the fans are a bit too much. From start to finish, the Poseidon 360 was quite significantly behind most coolers, with it outperforming only the geometric future one. But not forever. After about 50% of its fan speed, the other one takes over, leaving the Poseidon at either the loudest or hardest position, depending on how you're looking at it. Also, very very important here is that the pump of the Poseidon does create a bit of noise which is noticeable all across the board. It's not a lot, it's, very, it's a very subtle whistle, but that combined with the fans being as overpowered as they are allows the cooler or doesn't allow the cooler to reach noise floor at all. You won't notice or hear the difference between this and this once it's built inside of a case, but it's important to mention here. At 250 watts, something interesting happens. The Poseidon outperformed the Be Quiet Silent Loop 2360, but other than that, it's still a very solid middle position in between all the 360s. The noise to performance ratio changed for the worse, however. Now, there is not a single moment in which the Poseidon GT's noise to performance ratio outperforms the one of the Geometric Future model. Once we go all in, only the best of the best are left. At 320 watts going through the socket, it's pr it pretty much boils down to how good is your base. And the one of the Poseidon allowed it to keep the CPU at 80.5 degrees C above ambient. The overall position does, did not really change here. The corresponding noise to performance ratio Ratio, however, that, that one did change. Now the Kuga Poseidon and Geometric Future AIO switched their position completely. At these types of loads, the Poseidon is actually right in between the Eskimo and Be Quiet Silent Loom 2 360, which is actually quite the good position. Still far behind the Lee and Lee series, but significantly better than before. So, performance wise, I really thought it would be better. Don't get me wrong, it's not bad. On low to mid loads, it's a solid middle position, and on the high end, it actually starts to really show its worth. But considering the completely overpowered fans and that utter right fin design, I kinda got the impression that it would be better. Maybe not Lee and Lee level, but you know, something new, slightly be below what Lee and Lee managed to do with the Galahad 2 series, but uh, I don't know, I thought it would be better. One thing we've learned, thanks to the three workloads, however, is that the Poseidon is definitely to be used on high workloads. It doesn't make any sense to slap this on top of a, let's even say 13700K. Sure, it will do just fine, but even at, at burst speeds, the Poseidon won't be saturated enough to show its worth. So, as for a potential use case, this is definitely able to keep up with 3900Ks, 7950Xs, but unlike most of our other cooler reviews, I won't say and below, because in my opinion, the drastic change in noise 2 performance going from 250 to 320, that's a 3900K or 7950X and above. Sure, you could do that, but in, a, in my opinion, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Design, quality-wise, it's perfectly fine. It feels great, nothing wiggles, it feels solid, and I personally really like the matte black, matte gray design and even the cover, but that's really up to you to decide. Except for the pump installation, I am, I'm just scared about that one. Price-wise, it's definitely acceptable at 120 euros here where I live. It's really okay, nothing exceptionally expensive. So where does this leave us? Recommended, yes, but only once you hit really high workloads. If your goal is to overpower your, your cooling solution to always stay silent, take another one. If you like the design and you are planning to go all in quite frequently, 
let's say, editing workloads. This is just fine. This is perfectly fine for that. But for today, this is going to be it for Kuga and their Poseidon GT360. And at this point, a huge thank you to them for sending it over. And on a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but will also serve to hire somebody whose job will be to stick his fingers into way too strong fans. You know, as a as a benchmark tool. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Forza 135. I might not have been a fan of the mounting system there either, but it's quite the air cooler, it really is. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.